So you want to start investing. Here are five things I wish I knew before I started investing my money. Number one, get out of consumer debt. Two, knowing your credit score. Your credit score can hurt you, as most of you know. Three, knowing your expenses and your income. Four, with that knowledge, creating a budget. And number five, your mindset. Now, let's dive into these topics just a little bit more. Number one, get out of consumer debt. What is consumer debt? Consumer debt are those credit cards that we get or sign up for at the grocery stores or shopping centers or whatnot that give you a high interest rate and X, <laughs> X amount of percent off on your first purchase and all that kind of stuff. So we get hooked into it and now we have credit card debt that we just keep pushing off and it just keeps building up. So get rid of it. Now, not all debt is bad and not all credit cards are bad, okay? Things that, I, for me personally, now you're gonna find contradicting information online, but for me, mortgage, mortgage payments, car payments and student loans, that is its own separate debt category. That's why I wanna focus on just consumer debt. Consumer debt are those things that we just gotta get rid of or at least manage, okay? So, all right, so what I need you to do is to list out all those credit cards and you need three informations from these cards. The interest rates, the remaining balance, and how long have you had these cards. With this information, you definitely look into different methods of paying them off. There are two common ones, the snowball method and the avalanche method. We'll go into that into another video. Now, once these consumer debt credit cards are paid off, this will definitely open the doors and also raise your credit score as well, okay? Number two, knowing your credit score. Download Credit Karma. It's a free source that you're able to use online and in, through an app. Um, I have no affiliation with Credit Karma, but that's the main source that I use to keep track of my credit score. Knowing your credit score now will allow you to see the improvements that you make as you pay these credit cards off and also improving your credit score. Because when your credit score is at a good range or above, between that 650 to 800 range, man, it definitely opens up some doors on other credit cards, other loans, and things of that nature, okay? Number three, knowing your expenses and your income. What I need you to do on this part is get a sheet of paper, put two columns, one side is gonna be your expenses, your fixed expenses, okay? Your rent, your food, your groceries, um, your gas, and your other bills, okay? And the other side of what I need you to write is your income. If you have one job, it's gonna be pretty easy. If you have multiple, you can kind of uh, plug and chug how, many, how much income you're gonna put on that side, okay? With that information, that kind of gives you where, how much money you have remaining, okay? And then keep that number to the side. So when we finish this, the next part, what I need you to do is go ahead and download the last three bank statements of your most commonly used card. Okay, and go ahead and look at that statement and see what you're spending your money on because that knowledge will also allow you to see where the holes are in your finances that we can stop to keep you afloat and also make better investments later down the road. Okay, I'm not trying to say to stop spending on certain things, but you can definitely manage it and create a budget for that as well. Okay, so that leads into number four creating a budget. Now, when you're creating a budget, you can definitely have lifestyle things to budget for. So for me, for example, I have two things that are kind of close to non-negotiable at this moment in time. One of them is gonna be eating out. My future wife and I, we love to go out to eat. So we make a separate budget to what we are allowed to each week slash each month to spend out on eating on food. And the second thing for me is gonna be playing golf, which is one of my my favorite hobbies to do and I will find time and find money to put aside each month to make sure that I'm able to still play at least once a month or even just simply buying a bucket of balls at the driving range just to keep you know the moment momentum going okay number five understanding that your journey is completely different from mine and everybody else you see online I am still way early in my journey and I started back in 2020 so a lot of us were trying to figure out how to make more money. And fortunately, there's a whole internet of information out there that I was able to dive in 
And now I feel comfortable that I feel like I want to share with you guys and document this journey. So this is one of the things that I wish I knew that someone could have told me when I first started off with my investing journey. It's that because we see social media and other YouTube videos of other people's successes. But, and then you, in your mind, you start comparing yourself to other people and you're like, dang, you wish you could do it. And you start feeling a little discouraged. Just knowing this little fact that keeps my mindset onto myself and my journey, this allows you to make sure that you're making the right consistent steps in your own financial journey. Those are the five things I wish I knew before I started investing. Comment below what you have a special budget for. Remember, mine was golf. Also, if you like what we talked about today, hit that like button right here. And also, if you could, if you want to join our journey, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell as well. All right, see you guys soon.